Okay, uh, using a short uh, link is uh, actually a much better idea. So um, we learned from bad to back best practices now, and here we are. Yeah, uh, that's uh, Jeroen and Carsten. Probably you all know us. If you don't, just talk to us when we have a coffee break and so on. So what we're doing now is uh, we will be talking about uh, the yearly. A semantic Media Wiki Overview, and then it's again a presentation by me and Joan. And um, yeah, let's start. And um, yeah. yeah so very say, quickly, yeah. the idea is to give you an overview of what happened in the last year, especially things since the last FMW con. So this includes uh, new features and the new releases, also what's going on in the community. So yeah. So basically, yes. So. Um, yeah, so that, that's uh, okay. Actually, so we're yeah. starting with uh, actual statistics. Yeah, yeah and then it's about the community and users, how it developed during the last year, and uh, there were about 1,100 mails on the user mailing list, and uh, about 100 on the developers mailing list, so there is quite some activity. and. Um, yeah, and on Semantic Media Wiki Org, which is the uh, website documenting the software as well as uh, providing tips and uh, other things like, uh, let's say, displaying the uh, um, uh, pages about this SMB account and so on. And it had about 5,500 edits and about uh, 1,300 new pages, which is quite good for a wiki uh, of uh, this size. Yeah. So I'm um, actually quite uh, happy. Yeah. Still, we could need some people perhaps uh, fluffing up the documentation, but that, that's, an, that's another thing. So um, what we've seen in the past year, uh, when we were in uh, Barcelona, uh, Semantic Media Wiki 2.3 just was released. We talked about this in Barcelona. And um, now, um, in, uh, I think it was in July, was it? Um, Semantic Media Wiki 2.4 was released. Um, it was quite a big release with a lot of features. And, um, um, yeah, so let's get to these. Um, it's uh, to a big proportion also trying to implement more language uh, capabilities. So, um, um, to improve this, to make it easier to have uh, multilingual uh, semantic wikis. So um, it's now possible to um, store text in multiple languages. And uh, you have a special data type which actually fetches the text as such and then um, um, assigns it to a language. That's uh, it's a bit of a record style type, data type, but that's, uh, yeah, that's how it's done. And, um, and there's also uh, uh, a similar data type just for uh, properties. So um, if you have a property, usually if it's, it's all described in the uh, MediaWiki instances language, and now you have the possibility to also add several descriptions for this property in several languages to um, uh, adjust to what the user pair probably sets in his uh, preferences so other languages can be displayed. And uh, that would be look like, yeah. So that's the same wiki. One is uh, um, from a user who is um, in using it with uh, his user preference settings in English, and the other one, obviously, I, I believe that's Mandarin, might be Japanese, but you get the picture. And that's, uh, yeah. So that's possible. And, uh, oops, no, this way around, and um, yeah, there was some more to it, and now it's possible to uh, format uh, data values which are assigned to a number boolean date data values by um, using a, a new formatter which is called uh, local, and uh, then it uh, adjusts to the language. And um, yeah, it's um, possible to um, define a page language to a certain wiki page. Obviously, you need the 
uh, semantic interlanguage extension to do this, but still um, um, semantic media wiki will be able to recognize, okay, this page is in French, English, German, whatsoever. And a uh, lot of other features. Um, the special ask was a bit uh, of work was done actually now you have a slightly different interface which is a bit more uh, intuitive I believe and uh, if you have uh, queries on it it tells you okay this query in this case it was just looking for all modification dates which were assigned and it tells you ah, which backend was used to retrieve information tells you how long it took and you see on the right hand side in the left the lower line um, that you can even export directly results shown on special ask. Just a quick link to do it and uh, it's quite nice I think. And um, yeah, another feature with what added so far you only had allowed uh, allows value to assign to property pages. Now you can even um, uh, <coughs> um, restrict um, allowed values based on um, uh, regular expressions, for example, or you can even say once the uh, third value was uh, assigned to a property, then it tells you, okay, you can't do it now, and uh, you can set a media wiki, you can set a display title, and now it's possible to even uh, query results and use the display title in the result uh, rather than uh, the actual uh, title on which the information was saved. And um, yeah. And um, yeah, the handling of outdated entities was a bit improved. Now we have an enhanced date, time, and number formatting. So far, it was only used, um, possible to uh, get a plain uh, format as MediaWiki. And it does just yeah, like in the instance language. Yeah. And you had MediaWiki formatter, which was a bit of a pain because it gave you a somehow formatted language, but the result was actually uh, pretty bad, to my belief. And then you had this ISO formatter, so now you really have uh, the possibility to do it with a local formatter, which says, okay, um, the user language chosen by the user preferences taken into account to format that data or you can really do it individually, what you like, use um, um, these little, like a PhD is providing them, these little um, um, markers, and then you can have uh, a very individual formatting of dates, for example. And now it's also possibly that was uh, quite of a pain in the past, because you had to do a lot of uh, parser function voodoo, and uh, template formats and so on to get uh, a number will displayed uh, in a specific um, um, precision. So now you can say, okay, whatever the result is, I want to have two digit decimals, and then you get two decimals. Yeah. Before that, it was if a number was uh, 100.00, uh, then you just got 100, and that was really, you know, yeah. But so th this is pretty good. Yeah. And, um, oh, it's even more. So, yeah, as I said, there uh, was a rather uh, large release. Um, yeah, it's uh, um, a bit better to select uh, pages. So you have the um, possibility to uh, add comparators to single value queries. And um, you can even do range queries if they are setup of a wiki is like that you would have ranges to be selected then this would be a, a nice idea and um, yeah even more yes uh, that, that's the thing I, I added that's perhaps not too interesting for all of you but uh, ones who uh, also work on the server of the semantic wiki and have uh, uh, sometimes some issues in pain to, to, to work with it. Uh, now uh, a lot of uh, things have improved there, so it's really now you don't really have to babysit um, um, the execution of some scripts. It's now um, uh, better in a sense that you can, let's say, log it and uh, um, look after these issues afterwards. So, um, yeah. 
that is about, uh, for example, I talked about already about the shadow update parameters, and now you have um, big no exceptions parameters. So if there's a problem in the past, then it gets stopped. Okay, and then you did the S minus and then the ID, and then you started again, and after 500 a day, you said, okay, that's it's not my day. And uh, now you can assert and ignore these exceptions, and you can log them now to a file so that you can have a look afterwards and uh, do your gardening afterwards. And um, yes, you can even now um, add a little log to the um, uh, on, on wiki to the um, special log um, uh, special page and just providing information, okay, this script was done in that time at that date and so on. So that's uh, quite a nice thing, especially for um, wikis which are on shared hosting where you are, let's say, uh, more on uh, like a ghost driver and now you can actually see did the script go through and so on. So that's a quite a nice uh, uh, improvement. And then you can also say, okay, just update redirects if redirects were added and so on, all redirects were done. So you can just select them to, let's say, specifically uh, just update a certain set of uh, pages. So you don't really have to do extensive refreshes to get um, uh, the data being displayed in a way that it's um, actually um, showing the current state of information stored. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, full support for PHP 7 was um, 7.0 was um, added. And um, yeah, that's that's my part uh, from the beginning. And now we learn about a bit of about uh, code uh, things and um, yeah. Actually, not done yet since you skipped part of the presentation. Just to the next bit. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, yeah. Um, yes, there was something I hid from you, so I, I'm, I'm sorry about this. Um, yeah. So um, uh, we created a little uh, video to, uh, on how to install uh, a semantic media wiki and stuff. So this was actually watched about two and a half thousand times, but let's say actually 670 people uh, finished uh, this video, so that these are really interested people. And um, that was quite uh, interesting. There was an increase from 580, so there's a yeah, uh, slight uh, rise in interest. And, um, if you look at the installs, there are about uh, 1,600 installs from packages uh, per month for media wiki. So it's, uh, you can see it's uh, gradually increasing. So uh, there you can see there's an, an increased interest too in this software. And um, yeah, I think that that's now yeah, your part. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, so this year we got contributions from about uh, 28 uh, individual developers to Semantic Mainwiki. So the statistics we will see here are just for Semantic Mainwiki itself. They don't include any of the extensions around Semantic Mainwiki, and they don't include any of the tools. Um, over the course of the project, we've had about uh, contributions from about 100 individual developers now. And this is up slightly from last year by a few. What's not up from last year, and which is pretty much exactly the same as last year and the year before, is the number of uh, changes that were made to the code base, which is around 1,500. So this is very steady over the last number of years. We're also tracking uh, various things related to code quality, because uh, the main wiki ecosystem is not uh, that good in this regard, and we're trying to improve on this. Uh, trying to make sure that like everything works, including also the edge cases that not a lot of people use. So what you're seeing here is uh, metrics from a tool 
uh, one from one year ago and then from what it's now. So this is just giving some rough estimation of overall code quality. Uh, James has also been very busy writing tests <laughs> for both new functionality he's creating and for existing functionality. And now with uh, the development version of Simat Community 2.5, we have over 4,000 tests. And you can see it's been going up ever since James got involved. Uh, these tests, we're continuously running them on our continuous integration server. So we're testing with different versions of PHP, we're testing with uh, pretty much all the different uh, storage packets that are supported, and different versions of MetaWiki. wiki. So, quick reminder of how our versioning works. Uh, we're following the semantic versioning standard, so our version numbers, unlike the MetaWiki ones, actually have some kind of meaning. Uh, if we make a break and change, in uh, user space, so in what you're doing in the wiki itself, then we will increment the primary number. So if this is not incremented, you know you can update without your templates or whatever vertical. If you're adding new features, we will increment the second part of the version number, and if it contains just bug fixes and nothing else, then we will increment the third part of the version number. So if you only want bug fixes, you uh, can restrict your version range to 2.4.x or something like this. And if you want uh, new features with no compatibility breaks, you restrict it one level higher. So, as you probably know, uh, during the last year we've had uh, two big releases. Uh, we had uh, SMW 2.3, which was a bit under a year ago, slightly before the last SMWCon, and then we had SMW 2.4. Um, both with their own bug fix uh, release sometime later. So I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody who's uh, helped out with the project by contributing code. So as you can see, these are uh, quite some people. And I used this slide from last year and then updated it, adding the new names, and I needed to change the font so all the names will fit on the slides. So this is great progress. And um, yeah, these are the people that contributed code. Of course, also a big thank you to everybody else who helped out with the projects in some other way. So thank you very much. So we have also minutes for Q&A session. So. Uh, do, we, do we need to stop? No. Ah, you, yeah, you no, we, we still have it. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you talk about the contributors, and they say that uh, this is done. The compatibility thing should be shown. No, oh, hold on. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Martin mentioned previously we added full support for PHP 7.0 <coughs> in Somatic Minority 2.4. Uh, before this, we all had beta support, but yeah, now it's full support. And it probably also works with PHP 7.1, but Minority kind of has some issues maybe there. Um, with regards to what they're supporting Minority wise, uh, here is an overview of what we supported uh, over our past releases. The things that are highlighted in green are the major key long-term support releases. So, as you can see, with SMW 2.4, we're supporting quite a number of major key versions, including three long-term support releases going back all the way to 1.19, which is, uh, I don't know the exact number, but I figure somewhere worth five years of different major key versions. 
Uh, with our next release, we will finally stop supporting the very old ones uh, here. So we will bump the minimum requirement to the 1.23 long-term support release. And then when we release FMW 3.0, and this is still more spec speculatively, um, we will presumably require Midori 1.29 as a minimum version. But that's still some way out. So, <laughs> yeah, of course, there are various ways you can contribute to the project, and I want to quickly run through them so you have some idea. Um, important here is you don't need to be some kind of uh, coding wizard that knows all of MetaWiki and all of some other MetaWiki to make valuable contributions. <coughs> there are many small things you can do that really help out. So, first of all, you can create new feature requests um, that are detailed and uh, where you, for instance, describe a scenario that some other MetaWiki doesn't cover yet that would be really valuable to you or go to existing feature requests and somehow help prioritize them in some way. So if you see something that would be valuable to you, then also comment on it and say, yeah, this is something I would also want to get some better idea of what the community as a whole wants. Of course, file the books you encounter, which a lot of people are already doing, and the uh, uh, quality of the reports <coughs> that is pretty nice, so thanks for that. Uh, you can become part of our <coughs> so-called testers group. I've also mentioned this last year already. Uh, what this is, is sometimes uh, we're not entirely sure that, well, we tested as best as we could as developers, but we're not entirely sure that it will work for everybody uh, and would just like some additional feedback before we put it into our code base. So that's something when we ping this group. Uh, also, just when there are new features which are experimental in some way, where we want to get feedback from people that explicitly need to enable the features before we enable them for everybody by default. So if you want to help out with this, with this form of early testing, then uh, you can ping me later, and I will also send an email to the user mailing list uh, soonish uh, with some explanation of what this is and how you can be added to the group. You can help out with enhancing your documentation, of course. And as part of this can be pretty small. This can be uh, making edits on <coughs> our documentation wiki. And it can also be things as just improving the wording of uh, a point in the release notes. This can already help a lot. You can help with the translations on the wiki or the software itself by a translate wiki. You can participate in discussions. You can do code review. And for this, you just need to head over to our source code repository on GitHub. You don't need to actually know the code base to provide helpful input here. If you just know things about um, design patterns and code quality and this kind of stuff, you can already um, provide valuable input with this expertise. <coughs> and then, of course, you can contribute code. Uh, and if you do this, please engage with the active developers. Don't just uh, create something without ever first discussing it, putting it in a zip and throwing it somewhere. Then it's extremely difficult for us to integrate it, especially if there are issues. So uh, please create a pull request and then have some availability uh, to perhaps make amendments and try to do this in an iterative manner. So were there still slides we're missing? Yes, uh, there was uh, some slides about 2.5. So, um, yeah. I think I messed this up. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, there will be an upcoming uh, 2.5 release. Uh, I, I guess this will be in, uh, in, in October or in November. And, and with this release, you will be getting a um, native full text uh, search um, for um, a text you add and annotate, which is quite nice. And, um, and you can have uh, reference type statements to record, let's say, where you got the data from. That will be done uh, by uh, 
special uh, new data type called reference, and where you can say, okay, let's get you know, this information, the provenance, and um, the date, and so on. So it's like a record, basically, saying that's a value, that is the, the date, so as a type in there, and the source of a, um, information. And um, um, you will be able to have uh, property chains to um, add to print out statements. And um, yeah, so this will give you an overview of how it will look like. And these little dots will tell you, ah, okay, we are in a chain, and then to tell um, the information. And these little three fingers that's telling you are ah, there's a reference to this value which was added. So um, this will be really quite a nice thing. And um, yeah, and it will be possible to display the property property labels in different languages, user languages too. So it's an enhancement to what I already talked about, uh, version 2.4. So this is another uh, step into making it uh, better and uh, more multi-language um, capable. And um, yeah, then we are now already at uh, version 3.0, which lies ahead next year probably, and um, yeah, the breaking thing is that the type namespace will then be removed, so if you have a trans, uh, um, 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 how you call it, trans uh, moved your uh, types to a um, proper namespace, then you uh, should do so now, and um, good, the maintenance script ideas is that's more for admins, they will be removed, so you have to switch your scripts and cones and so on to the new uh, names of the scripts. And um, yeah, semantic statistics, that's a special page, this will most probably be removed. As uh, you already know, a lot of statistical data is on special, special statistics already, so that's the final step to remove this superfluous page then. And um, yeah, so um, there are a lot of other changes, most probably coming, but it's not yet known um, what they will be looking like. But um, I think still this will also be a release to look forward to. So um, yeah, so now we can go to the questions. So if there are any, um, Joe, I am here to, to answer them. Yeah, that's it.